Hello, I'm John Chambers, President and CEO of Cisco Systems, and it's a pleasure to be here today to share with you our views about the interaction economy. If you look at the Industrial Revolution involving into many ways the Internet Revolution, we think the next stage in terms of productivity and change in our lives has to do with interactions. We will talk about not only how does that drive productivity, but it will talk about it how it will change our communications forever. I will talk about this in various stages. I'll start with the example of productivity and talk about the effect that interactions can have on productivity as opposed to productivity that was driven before by mainly transactions or production productivity, if you will. We'll talk about the importance of catching market transitions, where if you're too early, it's almost as bad as being too late. But catching those transitions determines the futures of companies within an industry or even of countries. To do this right with credibility, you need to take a step back. You need to look at our ability as a company to correctly anticipate and then position our company and our customers for these market transitions that occur. There is probably no better example of that than Cisco's leadership and the analysis of productivity. In 1997, we went way out on a limb and we took a very strong position because of our own experience with productivity and networking capabilities to say that productivity of a country should not grow at 1% a year or 1.5% a year as it had in the U.S. for literally three decades, but should grow at 2 to 3% should be a given and 3 to 5% was very possible. Most people did not believe that that was possible. We felt it actually may be conservative based on our own experience of driving productivity often in the 5 to 10% range, very sustainable. But we also learned what was needed. It was about not just doing things the way we used to do them. It was about internet applications, if you will, combined with process change. So it is the ability to understand the changes and then learn how do you change the process at the same time. Many companies just put in the networks or the applications. And while they achieved productivity increases, they only achieved a small percentage of what was really possible. An example would be customer support, where we found that if you didn't change the support processes at the same time you put in technology, you might actually have a negative increase in customer productivity and your ability to interface to them. Where if you change the process, in parallel or in front of the technology and in front of the applications, we saw an average increase in the 25 to 30 percent range. So you're talking about productivity increases with process change through transactions, perhaps in the four to five times the range of what we would normally see in terms of productivity increases. And so this is why you begin to see companies and countries take a ma major jump forward in terms of their profitability and their leverage. But if you begin to think about interactions, moving from transactions to interactions, we think it's very possible to double or triple that number. In other words, the productivity obtained through this, even though it will be more complex and more groups interfacing in ways we're just beginning to understand, perhaps could result in something that is 5, 10, maybe even 12 times more productive than what we saw before, according to our net impact studies. It's the ability of a company, an industry, or a country to catch these transitions and then get ahead of their global competitors that determines their future. The productivity increases in the 80s were clearly about production increases, supply chain, if you will, the ability literally to move a production line faster than your counterparts. During the 90s and early 2000s, it was about transactional productivity, the ability to leverage transactions, ordering something, employee self-service, customer self-service. But it really is for the next one to two decades about interactions, the abilities of groups or in your personal lives, even your families, to interact in ways combining data, voice, video throughout an intelligent network that we're just beginning to understand the power that it brings to us in terms of capability. It is the ability to take these concepts and explain them in ways that at first makes us all uncomfortable because remember change makes anyone uncomfortable, including the CEO. But the ability to think about it in terms of transactions, in terms of productivity we're currently seeing now, and talk about what it means in terms of ordering information online, or checking on a delivery date, or doing a Google or Yahoo search. Then moving to interactions. The ability of groups to work together in ways we're just beginning to imagine. The ability literally to build a major new aircraft, perhaps with 50 or 100 companies around the world coming together to build that aircraft virtually through shared systems. The ability to bring that aircraft to market perhaps two to three years earlier at dramatically lower cost. 
and to be able to ramp it up into production levels perhaps in half the time frame that was done before. It literally is the ability moving from a productivity production mentality, which was about making things, building things, and growing things, to a transaction, whether you're buying or stocking or shipping, and now moving to, into an interaction, where it brings a whole new level of innovation to us, ability to influence others, the ability to group think together to move on a faster pace than any individual could do or individuals who interface to each other on transactions. The ability to change education at a faster and faster pace as well, and the ability to keep us all focused toward a common set of goals. Now, as you would expect, whether you're in Europe or the U.S. or Japan as an example, where you have major industrialized countries, you're beginning to see almost all the job growth occur in interaction type jobs. There is still some in transactions, and as you would also expect, the production type of jobs are actually decreasing and going to other parts of the world where they can be performed more economically effective. And the ability literally as you anticipate those and use the power of the network, intelligence throughout to change business process and to move from a transactional based productivity to interaction based productivity we think is the next wave. It would enable new business models in ways that we're just beginning to understand as intelligence moves throughout the network and the virtualization that is associated with that. But perhaps no move market transition wise signaled a fundamental change more than the intelligent information network. That is where it literally became virtualized, where intelligent was in the networks, where things were stored, where the application resided. Your ability to change process and applications once this occurred is actually dramatically accelerating. And eventually, as the network becomes the platform, something that we've believed in for a long time. As you think about the future, as you make intelligent information networks throughout, and you begin to think about the network as the platform, what do you do? you optimize interactions. Interactions among groups, interactions among companies, interactions among people and families. That's how networks we think will evolve. For it to work effectively, especially in the interaction areas, you've got to have literally your employees committed to being able to do this, your supply chain and your customers. And the more effective we can do this, the more you can buy, drive productivity at a faster and faster pace. Not just productivity, but you can meet your customer requirements at a faster speed than your competitors are able to do so. So when we looked at the productivity of the past in transactions, we thought about it literally on three axes. The network implementation, the applications, and the business process change. And how effective you moved on all three transactional axes determined your effectiveness as a company. Interactions with you see the same concepts your ability to move in terms of business process or government process change, applications and services, and network infrastructure, which will allow an interactions that we're just beginning to imagine. What are the key applications? How do the applications have to interface? And how does the network literally allow virtualization of both where the data is stored, how it is processed, and where the applications reside? The interaction strategy will vary by companies or by industries. But it is the next wave of productivity and the way in which market transitions will occur. When you think about it, it optimizes innovation in ways that we're just beginning to understand. Thank you for taking the time with us today. It's been an honor and a pleasure to share with you where I think interactions is going for the future.